Here in 1 Timothy chapter 4, look at verse number 12. With a mic hinted in this on his, uh, in his testimony there. And it says this, 1 Timothy 4, 12. Let no man despise thy youth. When you're young, like y'all are. Now look what it says for you to do as a kid going to school. But be thou an example of the believers. How? In word, in conversation. That word conversation in your Bible don't just mean you talk. That's your lifestyle. The life you live. In charity, love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. I want to preach on back to school 2016. I mentioned some of these things at camp. I'll go over some of it again. And I got to thinking a few weeks ago, a 16-year-old now was born in the year 2000. Think about that. That's hard for us to imagine. The year 2000, every 16-year-old here was born. We look back at that like, oh, that wasn't long ago. These, most of these kids were not even born in the year 2000 when the century turned. That means they don't even know what life was like before cell phones, internet. They don't even know. They grew up in an entirely different world than, than we did. And sometimes we don't understand why they can't get it, and that's why. They, they grew up in a different world. And tonight... I want to give you a few things about that this evening. And I think every preacher in this day and time, we don't need to be letting up. Lord, we need to be preaching like heaven's right over top of our head, hell's below our feet, and the devil's within choking distance. And I'm telling you this evening, our young people need preaching. Preaching the Word of God is what will keep anybody straight if they're ever kept straight. First of all, I want to talk about the problems facing our youth, the problems facing youth. You realize tonight that 750,000 teenage girls will give birth to an illegitimate child during the next 12 months in this country. You realize that teen pregnancy now costs our country $7 billion every year. There's a man at a, at a middle school not long ago. The principal pointed at two junior high girls and said, you see them two girls right there? They're both expecting babies and said their children will start kindergarten by the time they're graduating. Now, that's a problem facing today's youth. It's a downhill slide. Many young people are pushed in that direction by, because of a, uh, of a backslid, worldly-minded uh, mom that's not right with God. Many mothers encourage their, their girls to uh, dress wrong or act wrong or go to the wrong places to attract boys and their attention. He's right when he said a while ago about uh, getting rid of your boyfriend. You ought, to, you ought to, Lord have mercy. I've seen young girls get on fire for the Lord and come to church and they'd come to church real good for a while, and, and then one day they didn't come. And then the next time, Sunday, they come late, and they come in the back, and something was hanging on their arm. I don't know what it was. And uh, they, they'd come in there, 6'4", 94, you know, look about like that microphone stand right there, and uh, dragged him in. He had to tease the hair on his legs, keep his socks uh, standing up. And, I mean, face all ugly, full of zits and, and just ugly and stink and everything. And they call that a boyfriend. <laughs> oh, my good Lord, your mercy. You ought to thank God, young people, uh, uh, that, that you're in a church, that you're in a home where somebody tries to keep you from just going out and going wild and completely crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, you, we need to realize this evening that Hollywood has nothing, kids. Hollywood don't have one thing for you that will do you any good. Nothing. 
They have nothing to offer you that will do you any good whatsoever. Nothing comes from Hollywood that will push your kid toward God. Uh, you, you take all them little movie stars on there, Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan, they all started out like sweet little kids, you know, and, and they all started out like musketeers and dancing around, and now their life is ruined. Their life is shot. Their life is gone. Now, I'm going to tell you tonight, kids, you need to make up your mind. You've got a lot of problems facing you. You have problems like, the, like no generation has ever seen before. And you need to understand that they're going to, you're going to hear things at school that are wrong. You're going to see things at school that are wrong. You're going to be tempted. People are going to try to get you to go places, try to get you to do things that are not right. But every one of you here tonight, make up your mind here this evening that by the grace of God, I'm going to do the right thing. Like he said, remember who your friend is. You stand for the Lord and let him stand for you. You stand for the Lord and let him stand for you. You stand for the Lord and he'll stand for you. Now, I'm telling you tonight, you got problems. There's never been a generation of young people grow up that's seeing what you're seeing. Never before has the devil got his sights on a crowd of kids like he has the youth, youth of our country tonight. They're going to be trying to get you to go to parties. You'll be invited to places where deep down inside you think, I have no business going there. I have no business going there. I heard about a girl one time who wanted to go to a, a party and they're going to have dancing and drinking. And no Christian young person has any business at all where there's dancing and drinking and cursing and dirty music and dirty behavior. Amen? No business whatsoever. You don't have no business. You know what dirty music is. You know what dancing is. You know what drinking alcohol is. Make up your mind, I'm not going. I'm not going. By the grace of God, I'm not going. By the grace of God, I'm not going to make it there. I'm not going to go there. You ain't going to find me there, preacher. You ain't going to find me there. You say, well, what if I don't have no friends? Then you just do without them and let the world go on and stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. Make up your mind, y'all. You're not going to do it. Settle it. Settle it. You've got a lot of problems facing you. I, I went to school with this boy, and this boy got on drugs. And the last time I heard about this boy, he was in, in an institution somewhere. Didn't even know his name. His daddy was a preacher. And he got on drugs. And that's why we preach to y'all about drugs all the time. Don't, don't smoke nothing. Don't drink nothing. Don't put nothing in your veins. Don't uh, put nothing up your nose. Don't swallow no pills. Uh, that you know that, that you don't even know what it is. You don't know. There, listen, there's drugs out there. That flocka drug that I preach about and showed you on the video, where one time you do it, your mind is messed up for the rest of your life. Alcohol will ruin you. You hear me? Alcohol will ruin y'all. Make up your mind tonight. I'm not drinking. I'm not going where they drink. They can make fun of me all they want to. They can laugh. They can say whatever they want to. It's not worth it. I'll never forget. My daddy, my daddy drank heavy for about 15 years before he got saved. And my dad he turned in and lost his job. And you know how my daddy was? He worked every day. He went and got another one real quick, but he lost his job. He stayed drunk two weeks. And because of that, I got scared. And I was afraid to drink alcohol because I saw what it did to him. And my uncle lost his home. He'd come over to our house, and mom let him, my mom let him stay in the basement. We had a, we had a uh, bedroom downstairs, and she let him sleep. He slept on the couch and stayed in our basement for a good while. And I remember thinking, I'm not going to do that. And I wasn't even saved. But I remember thinking, I'm not going to do that. Because I saw the effects of it. Now what will happen with y'all is, some of your friends at school, they'll say, you know just what? We're going Friday night, and we're going to get some beer. And we're going to get some beer. And make you think it's cool, and then you're going to think that, that you're weird or something wrong with you if you don't do it. And the pressure will be on you. You say, you know, look at because all, everybody wants people to like them. Everybody wants friends. But I'll never forget, you've heard my story. And uh, I, you've heard my story. One night, I was coming home. We was coming home from a basketball game. And I was with these boys. I was about 13 or 14. And these boys were 17, some of them 18. And we was coming up the road. Then they was taking me home, getting ready to turn up the hoppy tom there in, in Nebo. And I wasn't even saved. And I was a teenager. And all of a sudden, 
One of them reached up under the seat and they pulled out a, a six pack of beer. And they just started popping them things and handing them to everybody in that car. And I remember thinking, oh no, I don't want to do this. I was only 13, maybe 14. They were 17, 18. And I thought about my daddy. And I thought, I don't want to do this. But I, you, it's unbelievable pressure. It's unbelievable pressure when you're in a car and everybody else is doing it. Some of you moms and dads have forgot what that feeling like. I ain't never forgot that. Some of you parents say, oh, I just tell them to jump in the lake. Some of you have forgot what it's like to be young and impressionable and everybody around you your age is doing something. It's almost unbearable pressure. And I remember sitting in the back seat of that car. And they, every, they didn't ask you, do you want one? They just handed me one. And that's what they'll do to you. They'll just hand you one. Here you go. Take a jump. Take a, a, a smoke off of this. They'll just hand, they won't ask you. They'll just hand it to you. And you parents here tonight, you might be shocked if we knew what some of these kids had already been exposed to and offered and maybe even done. And I sat there that night, and one of them reached his dark radio on. One of them handed me a beer, and I took it and put it in my hand like that right there. And I looked at that thing. I thought, I ain't drinking this. But I didn't have enough guts to hand it back to them. I do now. Let them hand me one now and watch what happens. I ain't had nobody offer me a beer in a long time. Wonder why. Wonder why. I have had it happen, but it's been a long time. I stood there that night and I looked at that thing and I was in the back of that car and I popped the top of it like that and I watched them and I put it up to my lips like that right there and didn't take a sip of it and put it back down. And put it up to my lips and took a sip. You say, Brother Danny, I can't believe you. I know. I was a sorry, good-for-nothing chicken. That's what I was. Buck, 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 buck. I was a chicken. You know, people say, well, if you don't drink, you're a chicken. No, most people drink because they are chicken. Scared not to. And I remember I took that thing and I looked at it like that. And when they looked put theirs up, I put mine up. They put theirs up, I put mine up. And I didn't want to do it. I said, I ain't doing this. Finally, everybody started finishing theirs and they threw them out the window. So I rolled down my window, threw mine out the window. Full. Not one sip. Their cans went ding, 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 ding. Mine went don't. Out there on the highway. Some old drunk found him a full beer out there probably that night. But I'm going to tell you that night, I found, you know what? I thought about that after I got saved, and I thought, why didn't I just say no? Why didn't I just say jump in the lake? Why was I even with, in a car with people that done stuff like that? Don't put yourself in that position. You know, listen, you don't, don't see how close you can get to the edge without falling off. Say, uh-uh, if, if they're that kind of people, I ain't going with them. I ain't getting in the car with somebody that drinks. Listen, I'm an old man now, and I still ain't getting in the car with nobody that drinks. Say amen right there, Coach. How about it, old people? They, you, know, you remember the night? I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the devil's going to tempt you. Y'all got problems. I just heard recently about young people that come in, their eyes glossed over, acting weird. And you can't smell it like you can smell alcohol on somebody. See, people drink, think people can't smell it, but they can. There's some of them drugs you can't smell. And they say that millions of our kids go to high school high every single day of the week in high school. The problems facing kids today is unbelievable. I'm amazed that any of them lives right. I'm amazed any of them stays right with God. It's the goodness of God that keeps any of us right in this day and time. The Internet, I never even seen, I didn't even know what a dirty book was when I was growing up. I was a teenager. And we went with this boy's house, and his daddy kept magazines under his, and they wasn't, it wasn't nothing like stuff kids do today on their phone. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the problems facing our young people tonight are astronomical. They're unbelievable. It'll take all we can do. It'll take the power of God. It'll take the Holy Ghost. It'll take the Word of God. It'll take some mamas and daddies that live right and serve God to keep these kids right in this generation. The problems facing our kids. The average age of kids getting involved in pornography now is 11 11. They've done a study. 11. 11. Number two. The present fears of youth. The present fears of youth. We're living in a generation that is against you. The devil, the world, the flesh is against any of us living right. He's against us. He's against us living right, y'all. He's against you doing right. He's going to throw everything he's got at you. You understand? You're going to see and hear things at school that you know are not right. Evolution. Do good on your test. Give the answers you're supposed to give. Make good grades. But you remember this. You didn't come from an animal. God made you. Evolution is not true. It is not true. It is a lie. It is not true. God made you. You have a soul. You are not an animal. You have a soul inside you that's going to live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. When you see a picture of a monkey and a little bit bigger monkey and a little bit bigger monkey and a little bit bigger monkey and it turns into a man, that is not true. That is not how you got here. You hear me? It's the world's against you. It's against you. It's against you. Listen, they'll try to tell, they'll even try to tell you there's no God. Atheism is very popular right now. It's cool to be an atheist and say, oh, I don't even believe in God. Do you realize how dumb that is? Listen, if there's no God, everything come from nowhere. That's impossible. They'll try to, they don't want, they don't want anything to do with God in their schools, most of them. Thank God for a few that still allow certain things to go on and prayers to be prayed and stuff. But for the most part, God is not allowed in a lot of school activities and the Bible and church. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you better remember there's problems. You've got problems facing you. You've got fears facing you. You've got stuff going on. Let me, let me just tell you how the news media is. Let's just talk about the news media just for a second. Um, when, um, when all that stuff happened in Orlando... The Orlando shootings, you remember a few weeks ago when that guy went in there and shot them people up in that uh, nightclub and it was, a, it was a, what they call a gay nightclub. Nothing happy about it, but that's what they called it. And when, they, when that guy went in there and shot those people, and you know, that was a sad thing. I wasn't happy about that. I prayed for their families. Listen, brother, that was a tragedy. That was a sad thing. But let me tell you what the news media didn't tell you. Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A in Orlando area, you know, is not open on Sunday because it's a Christian organization. And Chick-fil-A employees came to work that next day and fixed sandwiches and meals and took them to the people standing in line giving blood and feeding those people. Why wasn't that on the news? Why wasn't that on the news? I'll tell you why. Because the news media hates Chick-fil-A because they try to stand for what's right. They're the ones that gave up food and tried to help them people. Now you see how, you see how the devil's got it fixed when that stuff happened in Orlando. Uh, not Orlando, but down in Baton Rouge, that flood the other day down in Louisiana, and all them people got out of home. I mean, you know, they, groups like Samaritan's Purse went down there, took food, church groups helped out and everything, and not one, one of them news people said, no, you, you can't do this. We believe in separation of church and state. I thought they believed in separation of church and state. It's funny when a disaster happens, the church, they'll take our money, they'll take our help, they'll take our, they'll take our relief program, they'll use our building, but then we're supposed to keep our mouth shut because it separates the church and state. What that is, is the devil is in control, the God of this world, so that kids can't 
see the real God and the real truth. It's sad, it's tragic that there's teenagers all over America going to school and can't see the real God, feel the real power, know the real thing. It's, it's, it's hid from their minds and their eyes. The God of this world has blinded their mind. Number three, I said, you listen, the problems facing our youth, the present fears of youth. Number three, the potential force of youth. You know why the devil hates young people so much? Because God can use young people. I'm telling you what God can use young people. Old David over there in the Bible, he was only a teenager. They say 16 or 17 years old. I don't know that. But they say he was only a teenager. And here come David down there. The whole crowd was afraid of that big giant. And that boy got down there. Listen, God can use you. I've, I've been a part of about one, two, three, four, uh, three or four what I would consider real moves of God and revivals in my life. And I've read about others. And every revival I've ever been a part of or known anything about started in young people. Listen, the devil can you listen, there's enough young people here tonight uh, to turn this county upside down for the glory of God. If y'all would let God use you, you're a force, buddy. You are a force. Let me tell you, you are a force. That's why the devil wants you. That's why the devil wants you to listen to that sorry music. That's why the devil wants you to watch that dirty movie. That's why the devil wants you to drink. That's why the devil wants you to do drugs. Because he knows you're a force, buddy. You're a force. If you'll get right with God, get on fire with God, don't be a style follower, be a style setter. Don't go to, go to school and say, uh, I'm going to blend in. Say, I'll dare to be different. I'll stand for Jesus. Let the world go by. Be a man, brother. It takes a real man or a real woman to say, I'll stand for the Lord. My cousin, my cousin Sam Bellini, many of y'all know Sam, right now, right now he's preaching tonight at the Freedom Baptist Church in Hidden Night, right over yonder about 30, 40 miles from here. Sam got right with God when he was about much of your age, 16, 15 or 16, at camp. And I remember Sam come home. Him and Dan, his twin brother, played basketball. And Sam come back to school or back to church, and Sam got right. And he got so right with God and on fire for God, he said, I'm going to stand for the Lord. And he went to McDowell High School up there in Marion and carried his Bible every day for about, Three years, I think. 10th, 11th, or 11th and 12th. Every day. You don't think that takes some guts? Try it. He wasn't doing it to be arrogant. He wasn't trying to be self-righteous. He just took his Bible to honor God every day to school. And I mean, he didn't hide it under all his books. He laid that thing right on his desk. And he, lay, he sat there and God looked down and he seen that. He took care of Sam and blessed him. God gave him a wife and kids. He's over there preaching tonight. He's living for the Lord. Listen, some of that other crowd... Some of that other crowd that he went to school with, they're a bunch of losers, never did amount to nothing. But I'm telling you what Sam did, he had force. You're a potential force. They can't do nothing with you. I mean, if you'll stand for the Lord, your generation don't. Your generation don't know how to handle somebody their age that is telling them about Jesus and living right in front of them, not just preaching it to them, but being an example and serving God and doing right and being a good witness and being a friend and helping people out and standing for the Lord. They see it, buddy. You are a force for God. You're a force for God. I'm telling you, you just don't realize it, what a force you can be. You say, well, Brother Danny, I'm just young. Mozart performed his first symphony in Europe at the, uh, put it together at just early age, like 16. Tommy Hilfiger opened his first store at the age of 18. Bill Gates started Microsoft at the age of 19. Magic Johnson entered the NBA at the age of 20. Danny Castle started preaching when he was 19. Miss Desi started playing the piano at the age of 2. No, she was a little bit older than that. Listen, there's nothing wrong. Don't you get this attitude of, well, I'm young now, and I'm, I'm just going to live it up now and sort of sin for a little while, and then whenever I get older, I'll get right and do like, I've got to have my fun now. 
Now, let me tell you something about that fun. It, it comes back to you. It comes back to haunt you. You, get, you. you pay for every bit of it. You're miserable. You wind up sinning, and the next thing you know, you're, you're, you're not very happy. Amen? You're a potential force. The great Welsh revival, they say, started, started with a little girl, young lady, who stood up and said, Oh, I do love Jesus. And the Holy Ghost fell and moved through that whole country. And God moved. Number three, and I'll be through, the personal friend of youth. Proverbs 18, 24 said, There is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I found a friend, a faithful friend. If he stood in the fire with the Hebrew children and walked around in there with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if Jesus made a pre-incarnate appearance in the Old Testament and come down to this earth and walk in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he'll walk with you down that hallway tomorrow at that school. He walks with me. He talks with me. I'm telling you tonight, young people, I got saved when I was 18. I wish I'd have got saved when I was 11 or 12 and lived for God at school. You don't know what a chance you've got. What an opportunity y'all have got. What an opportunity you've got. Make your life count. Make your life count. I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you tonight. I'll never forget when I got saved. When I got saved, you know what my friends said? They said, he'll last two weeks. And that hurt my feelings. It really did. Hurt my feelings. But it, something in me said, okay, we'll show them. We'll show them. You tell me I ain't going to last two weeks. We'll see about that. And the boys that said that, one of them's on drugs, and the other's probably drunk tonight. I sure am glad that I found a friend. He's been my friend. He stood with Daniel in the lion's den. He stood with Paul and Silas in jail. He's with David when he's fighting that giant. He'll be your friend when you look funny at school. Listen, when they laugh at you at school because you try to do right, and they say, you're going to the party Friday night, ain't you? And you say, no. And they say, oh, little Miss Goody Two-Shoe. You know why they say stuff like that? Because you're putting them under conviction. You're living right, and their goal will be to bring you down. There are people like that. Their goal is to bring you down, the one Christian in the group. Don't get mad. Don't get an attitude. Don't be a smart aleck. You just live right and stand for God. You say, well, Brother Danny, they won't like me if I don't go with them. You serve God first and let Him take care of who likes you and who don't. Amen? Amen? He'll be your friend, young people, uh, when, when, you're, when you're made fun of at school. You'll be, he'll be your friend when that boy won't date you because you won't do what the other girls in the class do. Is that plain enough? I said he'll be your friend, girls. When that boy that you really like, he won't date you because you won't do what the other girls do. Thank God he'll be your friend. He'll bless you. He'll take care of you. He'll walk with you and talk with you. He'll be your friend when it's late at night and, and, and you're in bed and you're crying because maybe you had your heart broke because somebody mistreated you at school. He'll be your friend when you're lonely and scared. He'll be your friend when you got a problem that you can't talk about when nobody Nobody else and nobody else understand. You can tell him. Oh, tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He's a friend that's well known. He'll be your friend, brother, when they look at you funny and may you don't go to church, do you? You don't go to that crazy church over there where they shout and scream and run hard. Yes, I do. He'll be your friend. My friends laughed at me. They made fun of me. I had them, you've heard that story, I ain't got time to tell it. I had them stand over there at Hardy's in Morganton and make a circle around me, football players cheerleaders and pointed their finger at me and laughed at me. And they said, you don't even do this no more. You won't even go to the movies. You won't even do this. And they pointed their finger at me and laughed at me and, me. and it hurt my feelings. Yes, it hurt. Yes, it hurt. It hurt my feelings. But I remember I looked up and I said, Lord, you've done more for me than this crowd ever has. Lord, you've been my friend when nobody else. 
Some of them claim to be Christian. They didn't even witness to me in school. But hallelujah, I know you now. I'm telling you, His blessings come on me. His power come on me. He took care of me, kids. He's been my friend through the hard times, the bad times, when I didn't know what I was going to do, when I didn't know where I could turn, when I thought nobody else cared, somebody would slip up right beside me. He was my friend. He's been my friend. And I'm going to tell you, there's hard times coming down the road. He'll be your friend. Amen. I serve him because his bond is love. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He'll never mislead me. He'll never forget me. He'll never overlook me. He'll never cancel my appointment that I have with him. When I fall, he lifts me up. When I fail, he forgives me. When I'm weak, he's strong. When I'm lost, He's the way. When I'm afraid, He's my courage. When I stumble, He helps me up. When I'm hurt, He heals me. When I'm broken, He mends me. When I'm blind, He leads me. When I'm hungry, He feeds me. When I face trials, He's with me. When I face persecution, He shields me. When I face problems, He comforts me. When I face loss, He provides for me. And thank God when I face death, He'll be there waiting on me. He's my friend. He'll be your friend friend. He'll be a friend a step closer than a brother. You got him as your friend, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. You say, well, Brother Danny, what if he forgets you? Listen. Listen, brother. Justin Bieber will have to get a job at McDonald's making $5 an hour to pay his bills before my friend forgets about me. Amen. Lady Doo-Doo will get a, teach a Sunday school class before my friend forgets about me. Amen. Say amen right there. Hey, hey, brother, Michael Phelps will drown in the bathtub before my friend ever leaves me. Woo, hallelujah. That little Simone girl trip going down the sidewalk uh, before, I, before my friend ever forgets me. It'll never happen, amen. Duck Dynasty will be on the front of London Magazine a fashion show uh, before uh, my friend ever forgets me, amen. Bruce Jenner will get a job sawmill, uh, brother ca- carrying logs uh, before my friend forgets me. Islam will be Waslam, brother, uh, before my friend forgets me. He's a friend that that stick us closer than a brother. He'll walk with you to school. He'll be there when you don't think nobody else will. Love him. Serve him. Be an example for him. Your personal friend of youth. He's your best friend. You may not know it tonight, but he's your best friend. I couldn't tell you all. I couldn't tell you. I don't know why he's been merciful to an old dog like me. I sure don't deserve it. I sure don't deserve it. But I couldn't tell you the times that I hear about this person, that person, people I went to school with, overdosed, car wreck, mental hospital, disease. I can't tell you the times. And sometimes I just look up and say, God, I don't deserve it, Lord. I don't, I don't know why you had mercy on me, but I sure do thank you for it. Amen, amen. Now, kids, I'm going to tell you something. I'm your pastor, Brother Danny. I would not stand here and lie to you. Listen to me. You're going to get old a lot quicker than you think you are. Wow. It's going to happen real quick. I know it drags when you're 11, 12, 13. I know. But just as soon as you get about 18, time really starts flying. And you can do some stuff in your youth that you'll pay for the rest of your life if you don't live for God and do right. If you're here tonight, number one, if you don't know for a fact that you've really been saved, get saved tonight. And number two, if you know you've been saved but you're not living like you should, I'd ask you to get in this altar and get down on your knees and say, Lord, I want you to help me. I don't want to do anything that's wrong. I wish we had... Listen, there's, a, there's enough kids here tonight. Lord, you talk about a revival. If everyone is to just give it up, give it all up, and get it right with the Lord. He's your friend. Let's stand. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. They're coming to get a song. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. Maybe... 
Maybe. Bow your head, close your eyes. Nobody's moving. Nobody's talking. Be real still and real quiet. Bow your head. Close your eyes. Is there a parent that needs tonight just to get in this altar and say, Lord, build a hedge around my kids. She's going to play softly. In just a moment, we're going to sing. Is there a teenager or a young person here tonight who say, Brother Danny, I don't know for sure if I've even been saved. I want to get saved tonight. You come. If there's a young person here tonight say, Brother Danny, I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. But I want to do right. Not just at school, but at home. Amen. Amen. That's right. Parents are coming with kids. Husbands are coming with wives. Young lady, young man, if you're not right with God, why don't you just get out of your seat? Come on, right now. Come on. Come on. It's the best, biggest, most important step of your life. And young people tonight say, Brother Danny, I'm going to live right tomorrow by God's grace. Come on, just get out of your seat. Come on, come on, come on, kids. Let's get in this altar tonight. Let's say, Lord Jesus, amen, boys. Hey, that's good. Listen, don't wait till you see what somebody else is going to do. It don't matter. Come on, come on. Get out of your seat. Come on, right now. Come on, just get out of your seat and come right now. Come on. Come